Shalom. Before we want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahusha, Bashim, Rakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS groups and ones alike, teacher on percent truth. Shalom, Brakadam, to them for the edification and knowledge. And double honors to the uh, elders and apostles of GMS groups and ones alike, teacher on percent truth. Shalom, Brakadam. And the foremost, give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahusha, Bashim, Rakadash. I'm going to go to Proverbs 22 and um, 24. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. So angry man, you know, these are relating to um, associations who you um, allow close in your circle. So angry man... Uh, as a man of contention, strife, so um, it'd be wise not to pretty much deal with someone of um, uh, associate with those characteristics. All right, let's go to Proverbs 23 and 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats, man. So, in that regards with association, again, you know what I mean? Um, don't desire, I'm gonna go to Proverbs 24, you can talk about that one as well. Uh, one, um, um, envy not, not, envy that, um, be not envious of a wicked. I'm gonna read the verse, but the point is, is, um, is regarding who you associate yourself with. Because who you associate yourself with is very important, you know what I mean, regarding the, this, um, in this case, um, one who's evil does things that's contrary. When you become a part of that, you, you're going to, um, eventually it's going to rub off on you. Where are you going to be, um, end of that? Proverbs 24 and 1, Shalakia. Be not envious against it an evil man, neither desire to be with him. Be not envious of the weak, um, envious man, an uh, evil man, relating to, um, um, in this case, the wicked man, because they're in the position, they have certain things, they have power, they have position, they have material things, but not envy, envy not of them, because ultimately, you don't know um, their end, you know what I mean, because what they have is just temporary, man. And um, so, be not envious of them, you know what I mean? I'm going to read number two. For their heart study of destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. So they talk, they study destruction. That's the wicked. They study destruction, how to plan and implement destruction, and their lips of, of mischief and deceit, man. Psalms 55, um, 2021, for their words are like uh, smoother than butter, but in their heart they draw a sword, man. So, um, and also uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 12 and um, 16. So, they're deceitful and cunning with their, with, with their speech, with their mannerism, but in their heart, their intention is, is very nefarious and very sinister, man. So they have very, um, they have very, um, um, very, uh, um, very uh, wicked or evil uh, ulterior motive. All right, let's go to First um, Corinthians five and nine. First of Corinthians five and nine. First of Corinthians five and nine. Shalakia, 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. Shalakia, excuse me. But now 
I have written unto you not to keep company, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous, covetous or a, 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 a idolater or a, a, a railer or a drunkard or an extortionist with such at one no not no not to eat so basically it's telling you not to associate with these uh individuals with those kind of characteristics man you know be no be have no company or um or affiliation with them or association with them let's go to um Second Corinthians six fourteen. Be not unequal yoked together with unbelievers. And that's the point. Unbelievers. That's the two thirds. They the unbelievers. They the unequal yoke. Um, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness, man? They contrary to one another, so you know they're not gonna they got they're not gonna be on one accord. They're not gonna agree because they're contrary. It's like night and day, man. You know, so they opposite one another. Let's go to uh, I'm going to Proverbs 1 and 15. I forgot one on Proverbs. Proverbs 1 and 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them, and refrain thy foot from their path. Refrain thy foot. So don't go towards them, man. The path relating to the wicked and the righteous, man, and the evil man. Refrain from going to them. And, um, and go not in that direction, man. Psalms, I'm going to go to Psalms 1 and 1. This is Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, which is the wicked, nor stand in the in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And all these are relating to the wicked man. You know, so um, dealing with them um, relating to um, having counsel or or going or going or desire to be with uh, these type of uh, individuals, man. You know what I mean? This relates to evil association, man. You know, warnings, wise counsel relate or guarding evil association, man. The staying clear, refraining, refraining to go, um, going towards their ways, man. Their path, you know what I mean? Because ultimately, if you do, you know, you're going to be partake with them. I want to go to, um, hmm. I'm going to go to Exodus 23, it's Exodus 23 and um, 23 and 2, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, I'll read that again, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many after many to wrestle with judgment. So 
point is, thou shalt not follow the multitude who do evil, follow ways um, relating to the wicked ways and their ways, man, because um, it's, not, it's not to your benefit. Let's go to uh, Psalms 34 and 12. I mean, Shalaki, Exodus 34 and 12. Take heed to thyself, unless thou make a covenant with, with the inhabitations of the land, whether thou goest, unless it be, be for a snare in the midst of thee. And this relates to um, um, again with associations with regarding the wicked, taking on taking. Taking, taking, for example, being Hellenized and taking on these customs and traditions that's contrary to what we're supposed to be doing. Following the ways of the heathen, man. You know? And because of that, we, we, we part, we became like them. You know what I mean? And we sinned ultimately against Yahweh Shemesha, so we disobeyed. Isaiah 30, 31. We trust in Egypt, man. We trust in the ways of the heathen, man. And that, and as the punishment is that confusion upon our people, and ultimately that shame, man. Because we we trust in ways of Egypt and the heathen more than we trust in Yahweh Shem Yasha. And that's why we collectively and individually are in a state and condition as we are. And you can go back that with the curses, man. Curses are a primary example, principal, primary or principal example of why, of the outcome of not following Yahweh man. Let's go to Isaiah 30, 31. Rock and 13, this is a major one here. So Rock 13. Number 20. As the proud hate humility, so doth the rich abhor the poor. Now the rich rep represents the wicked. And the poor rep represents the righteous. And the proud hate humility. The proud is the wicked. They hate humility, man. Humility is the beginning steps of um, to wisdom and understanding, man. And have an openness of mind to willing to accept certain things, man. So these are contrary to the characteristics of the wicked, the proud. And um, and the rich, <laughs> in a matter of speaking. A rich man... Number 21, a rich man beginning to fall is held up by his friends. He's held up by his friends because, because ultimately rich has many things, man. And that attracts many people to be attracted to the rich. So they, 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 want, they want to get, be close to him because they figure they want to partake in what the rich, uh, the rich man has, man. But the poor man... In the same situation, but the poor man being down is thrust also away by his friends. So the poor man that's in the same position as the rich man, he's not going to get the same treatment. He's going to be, he's going to get contrary. The fact he, the rich man is going to be despised, he's going to be hated, he's going to be mocked, and his friends are going to leave him, man. They're going to depart from him. Number twenty-two. When a rich man is fallen, he has many helpers. The rich man has many helpers, man. Good example of that celebrities, man. They worship celebrities are code as idols, man. So people worship, they adore, they they look that as gods, man. So when a, anything a celebrity do, even if he's in a in a bad state, um, they're gonna still worship him, man. So he's gonna have many helpers, man. Even if he falls. He speaketh things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. 
So he can speak things that may not be, it may be questionable or not true, but it's going to be gospel to the most people. And, it, and many people are going to excuse it and, and make justification for what he says, even if it's pretty much BS. The poor man, but in another case, the flip side of it, the poor man, the poor man slipping, and yet they rebuke him too. So if the poor man that's in the same situation as that rich man, they're going to do contrary then. They're going to rebuke him. They're going to mock him. They're going to score him. They're going to degrade. They're going to degrade him. You know what I mean? So he's not going to get the same fair treatment, man, because he's a poor man. He's nothing in the eyes of, uh, of society from the optics. Number 23. When a rich man, when a rich man speaketh, every man hold of his tongue. This old commercial, E. F. Hutton. When they speak, they listen. Boy, that rich man is like that. Um, his tongue and the look, what he saith, they extol it to the clouds, and that goes to what he says. Whatever he says, a celebrity. That goes to what relating to, for example, celebrities or or a rich person, what a power and position, whatever they say. They believe, they, they believe his gospel, and they boost it up. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. So in the same position, that rich man, I mean, that poor man is not, he's going to be, he's going to be looked at, laughed at him. And mock and say, who's this that speak these things, man? So he's not gonna he's gonna be disrespected, man, because he's poor. Cause in the society we live in is about status, celebrity and status, man. What you have and the things you have. Number twenty four. Rich man rich riches are good into him that have no sin, and poverty is evil in the mouth of the ungodly. So poverty, which is poor, being is uh, is evil to the mouth of the ungodly. It's cause all about riches, man. Number twenty five. The heart. Um, I'll just read it through. The heart of a man changes his countenance, which is his appearance, whether it be good or evil. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance through the spirit. A cheerful countenance is a token, a sign of a of a heart that is in prosperity, man. And finding out the parables is wearisome labor of the mind. I'm going to go to um, Matthew 5, 1 Corinthians, that's what it is, 1 Corinthians, Shalaki, 1 Corinthians 1, to make my state the difference between how the rich and the poor are treated. This is 1 Corinthians uh, 1 and 27. I'm going to start at 125, I'm just going to read 125 through uh, 128. Because of, the because of the foolishness of Yahweh is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. So uh, the foolishness of Yahweh is wiser than men. And the weakness of Yahweh is stronger than men. And so overall, Yahweh is stronger than men, whether it's from, from a strong or from a weakness, man. For his ways are not, for his ways are not uh, our ways and um um, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not uh, our, his ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways, man. So it's contrary. We, so he's above us, man. Um, Twenty-seven. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So the foolish things would be the poor, the ones who are despised and hated. And a good example of that would be the prophets preach, preaching his truth and knowledge to confound the wise, man. That's the ones who have the wisdom of this world. 
And Yahweh have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And that's the same thing. So, the, the poor and the righteous, man. In this case, the, prof the prophets. The Lord will use them to confound the mighty, which is the powerful of this world, and confound the wise, which are the wise of this world. 28. And the base, the, and base things of, of the world, the, and the things which are despised, have Yahweh chosen. That's the poor, man. The poor are chosen for... Because they're they're the least in the base of things, man. And ultimately, they used to confound the wise and the almighty of this world, man. I'll read that again. In the base of uh, the base things of this world, in the base things of of the world, and the things which are despised have Yahweh chosen, ye and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. So these base things are used for the for the purpose and the will of Yahweh Bashem Yasha to pretty much bring things which cause which is to come to pass, man. Like prophesizing, preaching this truth and knowledge, bring it and um teaching um teaching pretty much the multitude of nations of society the things to come. And this relates to prophecy and the things that will manifest and happen, man. So in this case the prophets are, are the lowest and the base things that the Lord uses to confound the mighty and the wise, which are pretty much the ones in power, is going to confound them through the, through the spirit to um, speak about things to come that's going to affect them, ultimately. And this being said, this was something short. I give all praise to Yahweh Bashim. I hope it helped in some way. I give all praise to Yahweh Bashim. Yahweh Bashim. Rock of Dush. Shalom.